Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here for our quotient rule video. The quotient rule, just like the product rule, when we have the derivative of a function divided by another function, we can't just go one term at a time and differentiate each term and then say that's our answer. We need our quotient rule to do this, so this follows probably just right after you've been working with the product rule. Uh, you might notice that the top of our quotient rule here is very similar to our product rule. In fact, a lot of people will actually write this quotient rule top a little bit differently than I have. So here I have g times f prime minus f times g prime, and then you'll notice we're all over g squared. Okay. So one thing that people might say when you think about the product rule, and the way we wrote the product rule, we wrote the product rule as f prime times g plus f times g prime. And now what you'll notice here, this is really f prime times g, and this is really f times g prime. Now there's a minus in between though, right? So you might think of this top here as just the product rule, but with subtract instead of add. That's one way to do it. And then you have over g squared. I'm writing it this way because we like to use a little rhyme that a lot of people say as you travel about the world and do your quotient rule with perfect strangers. Actually, don't do it with strangers. Just do it with friends. So we have now g f prime minus f g prime we're going to think of as low d high minus high d low, right? If this is the low function and this is the high function, then we have the low function times the derivative of the high function minus the high function times the derivative of the low function. So low d high minus high d low. And the bottom here we say all over the square of what lies below. And so it's a nice little rhyme for us. Okay, so let's look at doing a few examples with the quotient rule. We're going to use the quotient rule to find the derivative of 3x over x plus 1 with respect to x. Okay, so this part down here is our g, this is our low function, and this 3x up here is our high function, that's our f. Okay, so we have g f prime minus f g prime in the top. I'm going to go ahead and use the rhyme here. So low d high, so that's low function times the derivative of the high function. The high function derivative of 3x is 3 minus high d low. So f g prime, let's say 3x times the derivative of the low function, derivative of x plus 1. So the derivative of x to the 1 would just be 1. The derivative of this constant would just be 0. So there's our g prime, so this is low d high minus high d low, or g f prime minus f g prime, all over the square of what lies below, the original denominator, which was x plus 1. So x plus 1 all squared is our g squared. Let's go ahead and do some simplifying here. Distributing my 3, I would get 3x plus 3. And then be careful, this is minus 3x times 1, so that's minus 3x all over the x plus 1 squared. And I think you can see here that if I do 3x minus 3x, that'll be 0. So we'll just have 3 on the top. And that will be 3 over x plus 1 quantity squared. And I think that's about as good as we're going to do for this one. So that is our first quotient example. Let's look at another one here. We have quotient rule. We're going to do the derivative of 2x minus 1 over x squared minus 4 with respect to x here. So my f on top here, this is my high function. This down here, g, is my low function. So we have first low d high, g f prime. So low would be x squared minus 4. d high, derivative of the top function here, derivative of 2x is 2. Derivative of negative 1, that's a constant, so that's 0. So this is low d high, g f prime minus high d low, so high function is 2x minus 1. d low, derivative of the low function, the 2 would come out front and multiply, and we would get 2x, power goes down by 1, power rule. Derivative of a constant here, it's going to be 0, so we just have 2x there, so this is low d high minus high d low, and we'll have that all over the square of what lies below, right? And so that will be x squared minus 4 all squared. All right, let's do some simplifying here. So if I distribute my 2, I will get 2x squared minus 8. And then I have minus here, so we want to be careful distributing 2x. I have 2x times 2x would be 4x squared, but I have minus, so that would be minus 4x squared. 
and then here 2x times negative 1 would be negative 2x but then we have minus that so that's actually going to be plus 2x and we have all of that over x squared minus 4 all squared okay so let's look at combining some like terms here I have a square term and a square term so we'll go ahead and say that's negative 2x squared and then we have plus 2x minus 8 and we have all of that over x squared minus 4 all squared Okay, at this point we would look at this and make sure there are no common factors from top to bottom that we could find and reduce and make this simpler. Uh, we could factor out really only a 2 on the top, not really going to help us so much. Um, this actually doesn't factor any further on the top, so we're not going to get any factors that reduce maybe with something involving x squared minus 4. So we'll go ahead and just leave this answer as it is. Okay, and finally, let's look at some examples of how we might avoid the quotient rule. So here I've gotten the derivative with respect to x of 9x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6, all of that over 3x. And this really looks like a quotient. I have f on top and I have g on the bottom and they both have x's in them. And so I could use the quotient rule here and that would be totally fine to do. But what we can do when we have a single term denominator, remember, is that we can split each term over that particular denominator. So this is going to be, just using some basic algebra here, that's going to be the same as saying, I'll do it in a couple steps, so 9x cubed over 3x plus 5x squared over 3x plus 6 over 3x, right? When you have a single term denominator, and many terms over it, you can just take each term on top and split up the fraction into pieces. So now we can simplify all of these and we could say, well, what happens when we do the derivative of the reduced version? Nine over three would be three and x cubed divided by x is x squared plus five over three, that stays five thirds. But the x squared divided by x will just give us an x there. And then here, this is still, well, let's see. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 2 over x is really what we have. We still have the x on the bottom there. So now we can just do each of these using the power rule. We want to make a note, remember here, that x on the bottom, this 2 over x, you can think of this term like 2x to the minus 1, right? That just means reciprocal there. So let's go ahead and do these as powers, avoiding the quotient rule now. So we don't have to do low d high minus high d low all over the square of what lies below. So the derivative of 3x squared is power rule. 2 comes out, we get a 6. And the power goes down by 1, so we just get 6x. For the next term, this is like 5 thirds x to the 1. So 1 comes out, doesn't change 5 thirds. And the power going down by 1 gives us no more x's left, so we just get 5 thirds. Power rule here, the negative 1 would come out and multiply the 2, so we'll get minus 2. And then the power decreasing by 1 here would give us x to the negative 2. If we don't want to leave negative exponents in our answer, then we'll go ahead and say that this is 6x plus 5 thirds minus 2 over x squared. Remember this negative power means reciprocal of x squared. Let's look at one more example here of avoiding the quotient rule with a single term denominator. I've got a single term here, 4t squared plus 3t minus 1, and that is all over the square root of t. Taking the derivative with respect to t, so we'll avoid the quotient rule by splitting this up. I'm going to go ahead and write all this down split first. So 4t squared over square root t plus 3t over square root t minus 1 over square root t. Now, whether we're simplifying or just looking at this last term and how to take the derivative, we really want to think of square root t as t to the 1 half. So if each of these is t to the 1 half, then we're going to end up using some properties of exponents here. So we will have 4t squared over t to the 1 half plus 3t, I'm going to go ahead and write to the 1 here, over t to the 1 half minus, this is really, square root on the bottom is going to be t to the negative 1 half, right? 
if we do that. So now let's just simplify this a bit more. Derivative with respect to t. t squared divided by t to the 1 half, subtract the exponents, 2 minus a half is actually going to give us t to the 3 halves for that one, 1 and a half power. Plus here, t to the 1 minus a half would be the 1 half power, so that's 3t to the 1 half. And then we'll keep our minus t to the negative 1 half here. And so now let's just use our power rule on all of these. So 3 halves multiplying the 4, 3 times the 4 is 12 divided by the 2 will give us 6. t to the, if the power goes down by 1, subtracting 1 from 3 halves would be t to the 1 half. Now plus the 1 half comes out here, multiplies the 3, so we actually get 3 halves. Subtracting 1 from this power, a half minus 1 will give us t to the negative half. And then here we have negative 1 half power, that comes out front, multiplies, this is really like a negative 1 here, so we actually get positive 1 half. And then subtracting 1 from a half actually gives us negative 3 halves. And so this is our answer. We can do some things with this. Um, first of all, t to the 1 half, we could say this is 6 square root of t. This t to the negative 1 half, this says reciprocal and this says root. So we could actually say plus 3 over 2 square root t. The negative means in the bottom and 1 half means root t. Um, now plus 1 half here, so I have a 1 on the top and I have 2 on the bottom. Um, and this negative really means I have t to the 3 halves on the bottom. You could do a bunch of stuff here. This t to the 3 halves, one other way that you might see this, this t to the 3 halves is really like the square root of t, and that would be all cubed, so you might see it written that way. You think about if you write out three copies of square root t and you multiply them all together, you actually have a pair of them giving you a t, so this part would be t times another root t. So you might see t to the 3 halves written as t times root t as well if you're looking at some sort of a textbook or a reference there. So there are lots of ways to write this, but we'll go ahead and stop there. Okay everyone, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.